You've probably heard people say that things won't completely go back to normal until we have a COVID-19 vaccine. And the truth is that a vaccine would be really useful right now, which is why scientists all over the world are hard at work developing a vaccine that is safe and effective. This is a process that normally takes 10 to 15 years from start to finish, but this COVID-19 vaccine is being fast-tracked, and we're hoping to have one within the next year or two. Surprising nobody, this is not sitting well with anti-vaxxers. I mean, the vaccines that take 10 to 15 years to test and develop also never sat well with them but this one especially so. Today I'll be looking at two videos from the top anti-vaccine mind himself, Del Bigtree, so that we can understand why anti-vaxxers are afraid of a COVID-19 vaccine, what the science really says, and demonstrate once again that Del Bigtree is probably one of the worst science journalists alive today. Let's jump into it. When you start hearing this idea that they want to give this vaccine to everyone in the world. They're racing to hopefully, they're now saying maybe by the end of the year. When you think of a vaccine that's going to have as little safety, we know there's no placebo trials going on against a, a saline placebo, maybe some other, you know, adjuvanted vaccines or things, but we don't have a safety profile that will be established. One of the most common things you'll hear anti-vaxxers complain about when it comes to clinical trials surrounding vaccines is a placebo control group. Dell here, like so many anti-vaxxers, complain that vaccines are not tested against a saline placebo control. In fact, vaccines are always tested against a placebo control. The idea that it has to be saline is completely made up. A placebo just has to be an inert substance that is going to tell you whether or not the active ingredients that you're actually testing have any effect at all. But I think the issue with these coronaviruses, what people need, need to be aware, is that this coronavirus has been around since 2003. Hold up. She's saying that this coronavirus has been around since 2003? No, no, no. She's getting confused with the 2003 SARS outbreak, which was also caused by a coronavirus, which is a family of viruses. And this one circulating now is very different from the one that went around in 2003. And there are no licensed vaccines, right? But it's not that they have previously done a huge amount of work to develop a vaccine. But the reason why there is no vaccine on the schedule in America or there's none available is that in the studies, when they vaccinated the animal models, that when those uh, animal models, exactly I sent you the paper, came across again a coronavirus subsequently, they had a cytokine storm. Again, these viruses are very different, so what was true for the 2003 coronavirus might not necessarily be true for today's coronavirus. Either way, there were studies that found safe and effective vaccines against the 2003 coronavirus. These studies were able to demonstrate promise in early phases of a SARS vaccine development by showing safety and efficacy in animal models and small human clinical trials. The real reason we don't have a SARS coronavirus vaccine today is not because we were unable to make a vaccine that was safe enough. It's because the interest literally dried up before we could get there. The 2003 SARS coronavirus only infected about 8,000 people worldwide before it was contained. So when pharmaceutical companies have to invest billions of dollars in order to get a vaccine from the lab to the market, they're not going to be very interested if that disease is no longer a threat to the public health. And that's exactly what happened. And at the end, it, but the last sentence is, because of these results, we have to really consider whether we should be making corona-type viruses. So I think that it's an experiment and that we should say no. And uh, scientists like me who, who study we, you know, immunology, we have to speak up because otherwise there could be significant unnecessary deaths. No, I'd say scientists like her are why scientists like me need to speak up and call out misinformation when we see it. There were many vaccines in development against the SARS-2003 coronavirus. Not all of them worked out so well. She's cherry-picking the ones that didn't work out well in order to scare people into thinking that a COVID-19 vaccine is impossible or bound to be harmful, when in reality, that's just a big lie. A coronavirus vaccine is possible, and we'll have to wait to see just how safe and effective a COVID-19 vaccine is. That's going to do it for the first video. Now let's move on to Dell's second video. We may have uh, spotted or perhaps trapped or cornered the 
uh, vaccine unicorn, right? I mean, this is something we've been talking about. Do they have it? I've been saying, when is it going to come? And it certainly sounds like they were all celebrating the idea that we are on the track. We've got it. Maybe we found some dung from the vaccine unicorn, and we've made our way through the clouds, and there it is, Moderna's vaccine. It seems to be working. Okay, so what Dell is talking about here is a statement made by Moderna, which is one of the companies working to develop a COVID-19 vaccine. And in their statement, they talked about the results of their phase one small scale human clinical trials. What they said in their statement was generally positive, which made media outlets, of course, overblow it. Because what we have here in this video is a disconnect between science, the media, and the general public. Scientists are not really good at communicating with the media, and the media is not really good at communicating complicated science to the general public. And this is the main problem in Dell's misunderstanding of this whole thing. So let's get into it. Uh, we had uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. coming out on Instagram, really blasting the trials, and uh, even Stat News came out and gave, gave this trial some poor coverage. Oh no, not an Instagram post by Robert F. Kennedy, a man who thinks that vaccines cause autism. So a lot of this video goes on to talk about this stat news article, which I actually think does a good job at putting the statement by Moderna in perspective. But Dell and his journalist friend here kind of twist it in an opposite direction. In the article, they said several vaccine experts asked by stat concluded that based on the information made available by a Cambridge, Massachusetts based company, that's Moderna, there's really no way to know how impressive or not the vaccine may be. True. It's really early. It's a phase one small scale clinical trial. It's not gonna tell us a whole lot about how effective this vaccine is going to be. So yeah, essentially the media took the statement by Moderna and blew it out of proportion. And this stat news article is taking it and saying, let's reel it back and be a little more cautious in our optimism here. And Bobby Kennedy pointed out something in his Instagram that got a lot of attention uh, you know, there's only 45 people in this trial, yet three of them uh, apparently had uh, severe adverse reactions. Do you know, did you know anything about that? Yes, there were a few cases of adverse events in this phase one clinical trial, and Moderna stated that themselves. But they also said that these adverse effects resolved themselves on their own and were not life-threatening. I can understand how this can be concerning, and it is to me too. But keep in mind that this is early in this vaccine's clinical trial, and it's one of 13 total vaccines being pushed into clinical trials as we speak around the world. In fact, the only other COVID-19 to have passed phase one clinical trials has so far reported no serious adverse effects, with the most serious adverse effects being reported being fevers. Now, this is promising, but again, it means we shouldn't get too optimistic. We could wait one year, maybe two years, or even longer for a COVID-19 vaccine that is safe and effective enough to be approved. When you have these people having severe adverse reactions, you should be very concerned. No, we should not be concerned yet because it's phase one. There's still a ton of work to do, including phase three trials, which will enroll tens of thousands of participants. Are there any other vaccines out there that are uh, having results uh, this week? Yeah, so the University of Oxford in England, uh, they concluded their vaccine trials and published some of the information. Uh, now, the governor already, uh, I'm sorry, the government in uh, England already invested 90 million pounds into this vaccine trial. So this is kind of their unicorn in England. Uh, they did wow. a monkey trial. All six monkeys went on to catch the coronavirus when challenged. Uh, After this having the shell. vaccine. Yes. Yeah, those results are not encouraging. But what happens in an animal model does not always translate directly to what will happen in humans, which is why we need to wait for the phase one clinical trials of this vaccine in order to make a more definitive statement on how safe and effective it might be. In the meantime, it's worth pointing out that the other vaccine that I just talked about was shown to be effective in preventing COVID-19 infections in monkey models. And just like in America, they're building manufacturing plants as we speak for this failing vaccine. No, we're going to manufacture the vaccine that is shown to be safe and effective and gets approved. As the week started out, we thought we'd found the vaccine unicorn. But in fact, as we dug a little deeper, it appears that that... Oh, darn. Oh, 
was a slight overstatement. <laughs> it's really weird to me how the idea of a COVID-19 vaccine failing is so funny to him. I mean, a COVID-19 vaccine could save so many lives and help so many people get back to living a normal life right now. The idea of one failing should not be funny. It especially shouldn't be funny to someone with such legendary investigative journalist skills as Del Bigtree. So overall, we have some COVID-19 vaccines in the pipeline that look really promising, but they are very, very early in their development. And so we shouldn't make any bold statements one way or the other about any of them yet. But once the COVID-19 vaccine does get approved, you can be confident that it'll be safe and effective. Why? Because the science will be there. A COVID-19 vaccine will not get approved unless the science says it is safe and effective. And pharmaceutical companies have a very, very vested interest in making sure that that is true. If they invest billions of dollars into developing and testing a vaccine that is only proven to be ineffective or unsafe, then they're at a big loss. So they've got a lot riding on this too. Well, that's going to do it for Dell's second video, and it's going to wrap up this video as well. I always enjoy debunking Dell Big Tree, and you can expect me to do it many times in the future. So if you like this, be sure to subscribe so you know when that happens. Until then, I'm Dr. Wilson. This has been Debunk the Funk, and join me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.